Welcome, welcome to our class. This is Dr. Linda, learning with Dr. Linda. Today we're going to be learning about schools of organizational change. So far, we've had a few classes introducing to us change management. And today we just want to go a little bit, uh, some steps further to sort of understand the theories and the models that surround change management. Change management is an art, just like it should be a science. So I'm going to present to you my slide in a second so that you can work together through this. Yes, so we're learning about schools of organizational change, Dr. Linda, learning with Dr. Linda. Yes. Um, okay, so when you think about schools of organizational change, we are talking about uh, the schools of thought. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in one of my videos, organizational change is one of those things that are very fluid and very dynamic. And uh, the definition of organizational change really is, is dependent on a lot of things. So the people who have come up with the schools of organizational change look at it from two main approaches or two main perspectives. There are those change theorists who look at it from the elements of the change. By elements of the change, I mean the people, the structures, the systems, the components of an organizational change process. But there are those who also look at change from the process of change. Now, when you think about the process of change, we're talking about the step-by-step -step processes uh, of a planned change approach, how change is introduced, how change is uh, implemented, and finally, how change is sustained. Now, for this class, we're going to be learning about the elements of the change. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the individual school of organizational change. So as I've mentioned earlier, the elements of change could be people, structure, systems, strategies, strategies uh, shared values, you know, the components uh, that make change successful or unsuccessful. Now, the three schools of change that are in that kind of a dimension include uh, the individual school of organizational change, the group school of organizational change, and the open system school of organizational change. When you think about individual school of organizational change, these are the theorists who believe that change is a function of the individuals within the organization. They argue or they believe the notion that if something has to happen, it has to begin with individuals within the organization. Similar to what Mother Teresa said, you know, that change begins with me. That is the kind of ideal or the kind of orientation that individual school of organizational change managers have. Now, for change to actually happen, uh, the theories argue that change is brought about through training, coaching, and counseling, you know, the individual approaches. Behavior of individuals is seen from how they relate with the environment. And uh, this comes from the classical theories, Askina and Pablo, who argue that behavior is learned and associated. If you remember that experiment about uh, the dog and salivating and food, whenever the dog was given something to eat, uh, the bell was rung and then it had something to eat, it decided to have a condition. You know, it conditioned the bell ringing with the dog getting food. Similarly, even in organizations, uh, people make associations. And this is where things to do with reward and consequences play such a big role. People know when 
I'm given this or when this is rewarded or when I'm provided this kind of a reward or consequence, it's supposed to affect the behavior in one way or another. So individual behavior is a product of the environment. Now we're going to be looking at one model of individual school of change. And this model is the ADCA model. ADCA is an acronym. It's an acronym with five letters, A being awareness, D, desire, K, knowledge, A, ability, and R, enforcement. Now, this model is usually used, especially in cases where change has to begin with the individuals. And by individuals, we mean people have to buy into the change process as individuals, not as groups. So the first step is awareness for the need for change. You have to create an awareness. You have to ensure that people have the desire to participate and support the change. They need to know what is in for them in the change process. You have to provide knowledge and the skills are required for them to actually effect on that change. And finally, you have to also give them the ability and ability here is not just know-how, but also you have to break down any mental uh, inhibitions that may result to these people not actually acting on the change. And there has to be reinforcement. Now this reinforcement has to be personal to the person. You have to provide a reward or a consequence that actually means something that individual so that change is sustainable. So how do we ensure that this change actually happens? What are some of the things that are influence the success of this uh, change? At the stage of awareness, some of the factors that influence uh, the success of that uh, happening is the person's view of the current state. If people feel comfortable and they don't see the need for change, they are comfortable in their status quo, then it becomes very difficult for them to actually embrace the change processes. You have to ask yourself, how do the people perceive the problems? Similarly, if people feel there's no problem, they are comfortable, um, in the situation as it is, and there's a very high likelihood that they will resist the change. You have to be careful about how this change is communicated. Who communicates this change? Who how do you communicate it? Do you use uh, official memos? Do you allow for grapevine? Uh, do you just send the message through any source? The moment people don't find credibility in terms of the person bringing about the change, then they are likely to resist the change. So you have to ensure that the person who is the change agent or the person who is bringing about the change is a person who is credible in the eyes of the audience who are to receive the change processes. Circulation of misinformation. How do you manage the rumors? How do you manage the misinformation? Uh, the contestability of the reasons for change. Is it contestable? And an example that comes to my mind is what is happening right now with the COVID-19 uh, vaccine. When that COVID-19 vaccine was brought out and people were told about it, you know, some people have resisted it could be because of misinformation, rumors, could be because of contestability. You know, people have argued, you know, different uh, things have happened to different people after getting the vaccine. And just because of that, they have resisted it. So the way you package the awareness can actually make the change processes to be successful or unsuccessful. The second step in ADCA is desire. People have to want to support and participate in the change. 
And the one way in which you can ensure this happen is by ensuring that people know what is in for them, what is in for them in the change processes. How will the change affect them positively? You have to package this change so that the person, the individual can see their personal advantages or benefits that they accrue from engaging in the change processes. So you have to ask yourself, what is the nature of the change? How will it affect the person? How about the environment? How about the individual's personal situation? What are some of the things that motivate these people? I have seen examples of um, difficult change where people are being, um, they're being laid off. And uh, the person who is supposed to bring about this change actually shows that being laid off from a positive uh, perspective. Probably they could say, we're going to show you, we're going to teach you how to be entrepreneurs. We're going to help you in financial management, in retirement planning. And so the person who is supposed to be laid off, rather than looking at it as a negative thing, they look at it from a place of opportunity. And that is the role of a change agent. How do you ensure that the people who are bringing about change look at it from opportunity and not as a thing to be evaded or to be resisted? The third step or the third component of ADCA is knowledge. People can only change when they know how to change. In one of my slides, or uh, in my presentations earlier, we realized one of the things that make people resist change is the lack of know-how, the lack of skills. And when people do not have the requisite skills, what happens is that they become anxious. You don't get to have change, you get to have anxiety. And when people are anxious, you can be sure nothing is going to go on. So as a change agent, it's very important to understand what is the current knowledge base of the individuals? How much do they know about the things uh, that you're supposed to do? Maybe you're, you're introducing a new technology, a new system, a new process. Are they tech savvy? Do they have the requisite know-how and skills to actually effect that change? Do they have capacity to gain knowledge? Uh, do they, are they in the right age group to actually want to gain knowledge or are they retiring and they don't feel the need to have additional knowledge? Do you have enough resources to actually educate and train them? You know, are these resources uh, or educational or training manuals uh, palatable? Are they are sufficient for them to actually gain that additional knowledge so that they can, they can be able to effect the new changes? Do they have access to that knowledge? So as a change agent, you have to find that information beforehand. What kind of knowledge do these people have? The fourth one is ability. You could have knowledge, but you might not have the right attitude uh, to effect a change process. Knowledge is not enough. It's important that these people or the person who is implementing the change gets to have the right attitude, the right behavior towards the right value system that accommodates the change. Are there psychological blocks, you know, physical incapabilities, intellectual incapacity? that could be hindering the change processes? What kind of mental blocks do these people have? What has been the interaction with the change processes in the, in the, in the past? And how has it affected their adaptability to new uh, changes? You have to break those uh, blocks. You have to break those barriers for change to actually happen. Is there time? Is time enough? Do they have enough resources? Now, the moment you're, you're sure that awareness is well done, desire has been created, people have the right knowledge, 
or skill set. Uh, they have the ability. Then you have to get the right incentives so that change is reinforced. Incentives, both positive and negative, must make meaning to the person, to the individual. If people don't see uh, the consequences to actually be um, credible or to be uh, difficult or to actually affect them, they are likely to continue resisting the change. And I think we saw this in the model to resist change that we presented earlier. So how do we ensure that reinforcement is successful? This is the degree to which reinforcement is meaningful and specific to the person impacted by the change. The association that these people make with the reinforcement you know, in terms of progress and accomplishment. Whenever you attach reward to action, you know, an action to a reward, an action to a reaction, then people are likely to act. Absence or presence of negative consequences. When people realize that there are no consequences attached to their actions, then they can continue resisting the change. And a credible accountability system. What kind of accountability system have you put in place that supports the change processes? So ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our lecture today. We have just learned about the ADCA model and how it relates to the individual school of organizational change. I want you to reflect on ADCA model and sort of come up with examples, even on the chat box, you know, and tell us how have you seen the ADCA model being used in your organization? Thank you. I'm wishing you well. Until then, have a wonderful time. Goodbye.